So now we're going to talk about retrieving SharePoint list data. Um, you know, jQuery is great for working with SharePoint's, uh, you know, the, the DOM as rendered by SharePoint, because there's a heck of a lot you can do uh, just with that, manipulating things that are going on in pages, uh, enhancing the behaviors. Um, you, know, you can add functionality just by uh, you know, dropping some script into a page and not really talking to the SharePoint server at all. However, lots of the time to, to make your functionality work, you really need to you know, sort of ask your point for some data and do something with it or write some stuff back. Um, so that's what we're going to take a look at in this section. There are three um, main methods to, uh, to get data from, from SharePoint 2013. Um, the, the method that I've been using back uh, since SharePoint 2007 with SP services are the, the SOAP or REST, I'm sorry, SOAP or ASMX web services. Uh, they're deprecated in SharePoint 2013, but they're very much still there. And they actually cover a larger, wide, a larger range of uh, functionality and, and provide a wider range of services and operations than either the REST or J JavaScript object model, JSON uh, capabilities that are in SharePoint 2013. So I don't, I don't see this as, as dead technology. It's definitely older. Um, but it's, uh, it's still very much there, and it still uh, works very well. Um, as I show you examples, you may, you may see that the syntax for using the SOAP web services is a little bit tighter. Um, uh, I'm not going to go into all of the things that it can do or, or that you can do with it, but, uh, you know, like I said, the, the range of, of things that you can accomplish is quite a bit wider. What I did want to do is show you uh, three different uh, the three different met, uh, access methods and sort of what the code looks like in these uh, next couple of slides. So this is an example of calling the SOAP web services with SP services. I've just released a new version um, recently, and um, it, we're, SP services now returns uh, deferred objects in jQuery, just like uh, you would want to use with REST or, or CSOM in, in the uh, sort of the more modern ways to talk to SharePoint. So if you if, you, if you're coming from SharePoint 2007 or 2010 and you're used to using SP services, by using these deferred objects, you're actually starting to move your, your thinking and your development techniques more toward the more modern stuff that you would do with SharePoint 2013, especially if you're interacting with it in, in the cloud with Office 365 or any of the other vendors where you can't deploy code to the server. So in this case, what we're doing is we're, we're calling get list items to get uh, data from a list called cities. Uh, we're we're um, storing the, the result of that call in a variable called this promise. And when this promise is done, you know, a, a deferred object or a promise is a jQuery capability. Um, and the, the way I think about it is you make a request and the the, the, the jQuery sort of hands you back a container. It's like a, it's like a sealed package. And jQuery says, you know, don't open this yet because there's nothing in it that's interesting yet. But when there is, I'll let you know. And so the jQuery says, okay, it's done, and you can open the box. So it's sort of like that, that suspense leading up to your birthday party when you're, when you're nine years old, at least, or who my son, which my son is. So uh, that's what a promise is or a deferred object. It's, it's, it's the container which will be populated at some later point. It may be, may be populated when you get it, but more likely it's going to be populated later. So we make this call to the, to the SOAP web services, and you'll see, this, you'll see this is consistent across the three methods. You make this call to the SOAP web service, get list items, asking for the, the content in cities, or what's called cities. You get a promise back or a deferred object. When that's done, when, the, when it's been filled up, um, we iterate through it looking for all of the, the um, the items in the returned XML, the uh, SOAP Web Services return XML, not JSON. You can't request JSON, so that's part of the reason why it's a little bit of an older, cruftier me method. And in this case, we're just alerting the, attri the attribute on each uh, row that, uh, or each item uh, of the, the uh, title. So we would just see all of the titles popping up in an alert. Um, very, very basic on purpose so that you can sort of see what the structure of this looks like. So that's a, that's a very simple SP services call to get list items. Next up is a REST call. Um, this, this is, uh, I think, 
I, I think if you were to start with um, interacting with SharePoint 2013 and, and trying to get data out of, out of SharePoint, I would start with REST. Um, there, I will talk about the, the client side object model or JavaScript object model next, but I think the sort of the way that the web is going is toward REST. I think that uh, while the, uh, the REST implementation that SharePoint, uh, that Microsoft has done with, uh, with, with uh, SharePoint 2013 is not complete, nor does it adhere fully to the standard, big surprise. Um, it's still the best way to go because you're going to have uh, a more standard way to retrieve data. You're going to have more people who can do development uh, using jQuery, using this access method. And I think it's probably the way things are going to go as opposed to the client side object model. So um, in this case, uh, we're using the JavaScript AJAX function, which is what we're using in, in uh, uh, I'm sorry, jQuery uh, uh, AJAX function, just like we do with SP services. We pass a URL to the API. Um, we have the API uh, URL that we can pass in. pass a request to. We're talking to the web. We're, we're going to get lists. We're going to get the list by title. In this case, we're getting cities. So very similar to what we did in the other in the other uh, SP services example. And then we're going to ask for the items. It's a get. We have to pass this this header, this accept header, so that we can get JSON back. Otherwise, we get XML just like the SOAP web services. And it has to be this particular string. So what we're getting, what we're doing is we're making an OData request. Um, so again, if you, you've sort of done a development beyond SharePoint, OData is one of the big standards out there that everyone is using now with, with REST calls. So again, this is becoming a, a much more standard way you know, just on the web in general to uh, retrieve data. And then when, when that call is successful, we, we call a function that basically parses that data out and we take the results that were that are passed back. The, the namespacing is, of course, different. Microsoft never uses the same namespace twice in two different versions of things. So it passes back a data object, you know, we've, we've named it that here, and then it's got a D namespace, and it's got a res, result set and a result for each of the items. And, it, and again, we're iterating through this with the plain old for loop in JavaScript, and then we're alerting the title. So very similar, the, the, two, the two links that are at the bottom are two of the best links that I've found to try to explain how to make REST calls. Though I've got to say, you know, in, in trying to get up to speed with this, the documentation that's out there is, uh, I think, rather obtuse. It's difficult to follow, and, and most of the examples that are out there are, um, uh, they're, they're a little too theoretical. So, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of room for or more book writing, or more blog posting, or more whatever, to give good examples of these sorts of REST calls. Because again, as I've said, I think this is where things are going. And I think it's where uh, you should focus your time if you're starting with SharePoint and jQuery. The third, the third method is the Java side ob Java, bleh, JavaScript object model. Uh, it, 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 there's the CSOM and the, and the, and the JSOM. They're, they, effectively look and, and smell the same way. Um, you'll see there's a lot more code on the page. It's a little bit more, um, to me, this is, a, this is a great method to start if you happen to be a server-side programmer, a more traditional uh, SharePoint developer, and you want to get into some client-side development, and you just find that, that JavaScript and jQuery are a bit too confusing. Um, this feels a lot more like writing C Sharp to me. Um, then, then it does feel like uh, writing writing script, even though it is script. So there's a there's an sp.js file that, that comes with uh, SharePoint 2013. In fact, uh, you, you had some some of the sim, same capabilities in SharePoint 2010. And it's again, it's just a different library of of functions that let you get at things um, from script from the client side. Um, it's a little hard to tell, but in this case, you're actually building up a request and then, um, you know, sort of executing it once you once you've got all of the context and stuff. There actually are a number of different uh, requests made to the server with this model, though. Uh, you know, the first one is we we make a call to get the client context. 
Then we make a call to get the web, to get the list, and then to get the list by the title. And then uh, there's a final sort of execute the query to make the uh, request to get all of the items. So it's a little bit more chattery um, than, than the REST call, which you, know, you can sort of compact all of the, all of the logic in, in your REST call. Uh, I, I'm not doing anything complicated here, but you can do, and I'll show you some examples, but you can do filtering, you can do sorting, things like that, all on one, on one REST call, as well as expanding uh, projections. In, in, in many cases with, with one single call. With the CSOM, you tend to see a little bit more chatter on the line. Um, but again, it's more of a, I think it's more of a development pattern that's going to make sense to people who have done a lot more of the server-side coding stuff and are used to the uh, server-side 